Okay, we're recording. Let's go to PowerPoint. Integument, our skin. Okay, more people. Leah, you all. Admit all. Okay, so we got a collection of everybody. So we'll go to the integument PowerPoint. The integument is our skin. It's a very large organ. It acts to uh, cool us and protect us. And, uh, what else does it do? Okay. The integumentary system has epidermis, dermis, accessory structures like fingernails and so on. Okay, we'll admit some more people. Okay, back to integument. So integument uh, is our cutaneous membrane, the skin. The epidermis is the top layer, then the dermis. The dermis contains blood vessels, nerves, fat. Okay, we got some more people sneaking in. Okay, back to integument. Okay, so let's keep on moving. We don't need this down here. Okay, what's the functions of the integument? Protect us. Keep the bacteria out. Keep our blood vessels from leaking. Maintain our temperature. Makes vitamin D. Sensory reception. Touch, heat, pain. Excretion and secretion. Excretion of sweat and waste. Uh, secretion of sebum, a waxy material that helps waterproof our integument. So here's a picture of the integument. There'll be a bunch of, or a collection of questions uh, based upon a picture just like this. So we all have hair. Okay, we got more people coming in. Okay, admit. Okay, we're back to integument. So this is a very important diagram. Uh, so we start from the external surface. We have hairs and a hair follicle. We have sweat glands. Uh, epidermal ridge uh, is this extension of the epidermis into the dermis. The dermal papilla is the little indentation where the dermis is grabbing on to the epidermis. A sebaceous gland is often associated with hair follicles. The erectile pillar muscle allows us to change the angle of our hairs in order to hold warm air next to our skin. Again, sweat glands cool us and excrete waste. Uh, there's touch and pet pressure receptors. These are called Pacinian corpuscles. I mentioned hair follicle. I mentioned that the uh, hypodermis contains uh, just above them in the dermis sweat glands, but arteries and veins and nerves and a lot of adipose fat tissue that helps insulate, uh, helps the skin uh, make sure we are internal Temperature stays at 37 degrees centigrade. So make sure you know that the top layer is the epidermis. Second one is the dermis. Notice that there's no blood vessels in the epidermis. There are receptors that go into the dermal papilla, for instance. And we'll learn more about that. So remember the dermal papilla is this indentation in the epidermis layers as if the dermal papilla were grabbing on to the epidermis. The epidermal ridges are these little extensions of the epidermis as if the epidermis was grabbing on and holding onto the dermis. Okay, the epidermis is stratified squamous meaning that it has layers and layers of squamous cells. We have thick skin on our soles of our feet and our palms. 
the rest of the body has four layers. So stratified means that we have multiple layers in our epidermis. So here are the layers of the epidermis, starting from the interior, the stratum germinativum, uh, produces new cells for growth. The stratum spinosum is, has spikes. It's right above the germinativum. Granulosum has granules. We'll talk about those more in a moment. In thick skin, we have a stratum lucidum. And on the top layer, uh, cells are basically flattened and without a nucleus and have died, and they contain a keratin, a protein that helps waterproof us. So if you look at uh, the epidermis, this whole surface where the cells are flattened and no nuclei, that's the stratum corneum. And then this layer right below the stratum corneum is the stratum lucidum. It often appears clear or without any pigment. Then the stratum granulosum, the stratum spinosum, stratum germinativum, where new cells grow and those cells are constantly produced and cells move up through the various layers. Um, melanin can be added uh, to the skin depending on uh, the, the uh, pigments in our skin. Uh, so melanin, particularly if you get a sunburn, you can increase the melanin production to help protect your skin. So here's our epidermal ridge. Here's our dermal papilla. Here's the first layer of the dermis. Okay, the germinativum, stem cells that divide routinely and they replace uh, cells because as the cells rub off, you're constantly losing skin cells. Melanocytes in the germinativum produce melanin to help predict our skin from UV radiation. And uh, so this is the bottom layer, the basal layer of the epidermis. And we have the spinosum, spiny layer, it's right on top of the stratum germinativum. Then we have the stratum granulosum where uh, keratin granules are produced to waterproof the skin. Uh, we have the stratum lucidum as a clear layer that only occurs in palms and the soles of the feet. Stratum corneum is the top layer. There are flattened dead cells there's a lot of keratin, and it's a tough water-resistant protein. Melanocytes make melanin, provides UV production, uh, gives skin a reddish-brown to brown-black color. Keratin is another pigment derived from diet, and hemoglobin uh, is the color of uh, blood. If you look at Venous blood, it's going to be less red. If you look at oxygenated blood, it's going to be much, much more bright, bright red because it has oxygen in it. And it changes colors based upon how much oxygen is attached. And that's how these new uh, oxygen meters, every time you go to the doctor, they check your oxygen saturation. So the melanocytes are going to produce this pigment and it's going to be involved in how dark the skin is or the lack of how light the skin is. So we have a whole variety of skin pigments in the human race and there's no race. Race is a construct. There's only one race on the planet that's humans. UV radiation, UV radiation can activate the synthesis of vitamin D. Obviously, it can burn your skin. 
premature agents, bad malignant melanoma, and basal cell carcinoma. Okay, let's go back and stop that. Multiple people want to join, admit all, sorry. Okay, everybody's here. So the first, we'll stop recording. Stop recording, and then stop recording, stop recording.